One of the things that I love is that two films idea of your life. And there's like two stories you can tell. One that is safe and full of regret, and one that is risky and full of pride and joy. Debating whether or not to put my glasses on because I don't want to see how many people are in this room. So I think I'm going to leave them. Um, please forgive me for having these notes. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to remember what I want to say. Okay, so it turns out that I should have thought about what a year of saying yes would mean when I first started. Of all the things I've been challenged with in the last six months, I think David, Claire, and Naomi turning up in the kitchen and asking me to do this talk might just be the hardest. But it seems fitting that somehow I'm up here talking about it when it was being here last year that gave me the kick I needed to get this project started. So, for most of you who won't know, I'm Meg, and I also go by the name of Girl Friday. It's actually a reference to Robinson Crusoe's Man Friday, his right-hand man. I'm currently spending a year travelling around the world, trading my skills and time in return for the bare necessities and the opportunity to learn. No money, no contracts, just me willing to go anywhere to help anyone with anything, within reason, <laughs> so long as it has goods at the centre of it. But first, a little bit of context. I came out of university being, out, being great at doing a lot of things, but it turned out that most of them don't actually apply to real life. Although I had an incredible time, I felt cheated and not alone in being dissatisfied for not finding my thing while I was there. I've since spent the last few years gradually and, un and unknowingly becoming what I like to call a professional generalist. Someone who helps everyone with anything and everything to get the job done. In each of my graduate jobs, I've always seemed to wear different hats. When I was sitting down to think about what I was going to say here today, I realised it's only recently that I've actually become comfortable with it. I've always been a Girl Friday of sorts. I come from a family of them. Growing up, I would lend a hand around my dad's restaurant, and when I was 11, my mum took me out of school, and she and I backpacked around Australia for a year, while she turned her hand to everything from labouring on building sites to picking watermelons. She has a lifelong running joke with me that anything I find difficult or challenging is simply called character building. <laughs> and I think it's her mission in life to make sure I'm pumped full of it. In fact, when I rang her last night to tell her I'd be doing this talk, it was those famous words that she left me with as she hung up. At the end of 2014, I left my, my first job, finishing a project where I was the editor of a book about the mavericks in business, but where it seemed my biggest strength was being able to do a lot of different things and change hats when it was needed. But that's not really something that's easy to communicate when you build a portfolio or you write a CV. So I spent four months getting a bit lost in Central America, wondering if and how I could turn being a professional general, generalist into my thing. And then I came back to the Do Lectures this time last year and spent a week with the other volunteers, essentially helping with anything and, and everything that needed to be done to make the Do Lectures what it is today. By the end of the week, I launched myself as Girl Friday in the Do Auction, and by the end of that week, all I could think about was how do I make this feeling last? At the end, I was working... At the time, I was working in London where I was feeling increasingly frustrated at the cycle we all seemed to be trapped in, working hard to save money, but never quite getting there because we needed to spend the money we earn on things to make us feel better about the time we spent working. So, I decided to see what would happen if I took money out of the equation and took Girl Friday on the road. At the end of November, I launched this project by putting a call out on Instagram in the form of this image. Around this time, I also went back to good old snail mail, where I sent letters to some people I wanted to work with, and within a few weeks, my first flights were booked, and there was no going back. This was actually sent to Mimi, who's in the audience today, which is terrifying me. <laughs> um, who I, I actually sent this letter to her back in September, October time last year, just before I kind of launched it on Instagram. And it basically says, I love what you're doing. This is me. I want to help you. Please come and let me stay with you for a while and see if we can make some good things happen together. Um, yeah, and luckily she replied. <laughs> okay, 
In January, I decided I had started what has been six months of what Jen, your lovely cook in the kitchen, rightly describes as sweet, simple adventure. So far, it's taken me to the north of England, Paris, Brisbane, rural Australia, and upstate New York. And this week, me, uh, this week marks exactly my halfway point, six months. I've done around 10 trades, some as long as two months, and some as short as a couple of hours. I'm truly having an incredible time in ways I could never have imagined. To give you an idea of how, of how little I could have predicted what I would be doing, I thought it would be funny to look back at this memory book that I've been keeping, because my, mainly because my memory tends to be so awful. And to be honest, it's pretty much full of the most random things. OK, here's a lift. Deep breath. Smuggling 60 kilos of dr drills. <laughs> Nearly just had drugs then. Drills. <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> Start again. Smuggling 60 kilos of drills, shelves, and hammers onto the Eurostar to build an exhibition stand in a freezing cold aircraft hangar in Paris. Turning an orchard's worth of nectarines into jam and chutney before possums and kangaroos could snag them. Baking galettes in front of 10 camera crazed food photography students. Learning all the words to Disney's Frozen soundtrack on dozens of kindergarten runs. Making the most fancy of pastries and tiniest of kitchens. Stepping in to help cook a seasonal supper for 60. Baking cake in exchange for a place to sleep in New York. Moving 161 chickens from indoor to outdoor mobile chicken coops. Crafting birthday cakes out of watermelon. Turning an apartment into a pop-up shop in New York. Stuffing tights with foraged apples to make apple sauce. Filling trucks with rocks for, work for workshops. Unpacking boxes of day-old chicks. Mastering the art of short but effective bedtime stories. Baking everything from sausage rolls to bunt cakes and bread to keep the customers of a busy farm shop satisfied. And foraging for fruit to preserve. Decorating the rafters of, town, of a town hall with a ton of forage flowers, scrubbing a thousand dishes and mopping floors to dodgy music choices at the end of long weekends. Skyping people from dirt roads and cars in an effort to find internet signal, sleeping on airbeds, in attics, in the plushes of bachelor pads, in a laundry room and on sofas. Driving a host of different vehicles on various sides of the road to complete a hundred errands and usually getting lost along the way, but mainly Earning a beer almost every day and sleeping better most nights than I ever have done before. And here is some of the images that I've been taking along the way. And here I am again, back where it kind of started. I can honestly say it's been the best thing I've ever done for myself, but also one of the hardest. I don't honestly know how I'm ever going to stop. I seem to meet someone every day that I could do a trade with. It turns out speaking here was a great opportunity and a good point to stop and think about what it all means. Some of the things I predicted and others are completely unexpected. Most of this thinking was actually done while I was washing up yesterday <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> so, the expected parts, skills. I set out to learn something from everyone I traded with and as you can see from my list earlier on, what I've learned is actually is actually totally random, but will hopefully someday be completely relevant. It's funny because I always said I would never go back to school after university, and here I am filling notebooks with all these skills that people have been generous enough to share with me. I've learned about the art of sourdough from Mimi, pottery with a lady called Michelle in New York, preserving in both Australia and America, film photography, who's our lovely photographer today at the Do Lectures, and even making knives with an 18-year-old boy in his parents' shed in New York. These are the official skills that were part of some of my trades, and although there are amazing things to learn, it's actually been working with the people themselves that's taught me the most. I'm aware of how much that sounds like a cliche. <laughs> so, that's the kind of part where the expected things end. What comes next is the unexpected parts. Firstly, the people. Of all the things I've done, have been in partnership with, with a bunch of people who I'm still completely mind-blown by. Everyone I've worked with works every minute of every day to make their business happen. They're all the hardest working people I've ever met, and most of the people around them can't see, them, can't see their feet paddling like crazy under the surface. They have that secret weapon of being able to find the last 1% when everything else is spent. 
from being able to laugh about carrying the heaviest of bags up five flights of stairs to chasing escaped animals after the longest days in a farm kitchen and being able to see the funny side in being booked by the police for driving an illegal vehicle full of foraged oak branches. <laughs> all of which happened. Secondly, trust. The people who I've traded with all had an idea and nearly all of them have compromised in other areas of their life to make it happen. They're all self-made and self-funded and it's an incredible thing that they're willing to trust me, not only to help out, but quite often to take responsibility over parts of their business, to be trusted with their cars, their children, and their animals, but most importantly, with their reputation. Many of these people have been women, and I can honestly say they have more grit, determination, and tireless energy of anyone I've ever met. I'll consider myself lucky to have as much passion as they do about something one day. Third comes family something I didn't ever predict. When you set off on a trading project, you're essentially moving into other people's lives for the time that you're with them. That also means welcoming a stranger into their family home and in those precious few hours of the day when they're not working. That's meant I've celebrated 5th, 40th and 50th birthday parties and shared 100 family dinners, but it's also meant being there for each other on the days when things go wrong. The fourth is friends. When you're away from anyone you know for this amount of time, you very quickly make very close friends. And without them, this trip would have been very different. I've always had friends in different places, but it's when things go wrong, you realise how great they are, like when a trade falls through. And this is what happened the day before I was due to fly to Australia for one of my first trades. I posted this image to Instagram, and within an hour, dozens of people had sent me ideas, ideas. And as I was leaving for the airport, I had an email from a lady called Natasha, who sent me a few lines about what she was doing in Victoria in Australia, and I literally only had time to send her a reply with one word, which was yes. I ended up staying with her for two and a half months, and it turned out better than the council trade ever could have. Many of those people who stepped in to help are here today, and have always have, have all wished me well along the way, so I want to just say thank you so much, and I couldn't have done any of this without you. Which brings me to what's hard. I've had to learn with being comfortable with the unknown. There's been trades that I've set my heart on that haven't worked out, and there's been a lot of things I've done which I wasn't expecting. There's also been days when it's been exhausting. People building their dream often don't take time off, and as a result, it's often easy to get caught out by trying to match their energy. Sitting down to write this was probably the most I've sat down for in six months. But honestly, I feel like the harder things have gotten, the more I've learned and enjoyed, and there is nothing quite like working on something that has a direct visible outcome. There's that character building thing again. Fifth and finally is freedom. Freedom from money, which it turns out was the focus of much of my previous stress, and also freedom from self-doubt. When you decide to say yes to anything, it takes many of the decisions out of your hands and you learn to roll with what happens next. I've honestly never been this happy in myself and I kind of feel like I've stumbled across some sort of secret. I also just wanted to add that I've also found freedom from things. I'm currently travelling with one bag and a laptop and I don't honestly remember half of the things I own in my actual life in this country. <laughs> um, so, I wanted to finish with this. I posted this image when I was leaving my last trade in New York last week and it still feels kind of relevant. And what I wrote was, six months, ten trades, four seasons, two families, saying yes more than no, being less afraid to ask for more, no money, less screen time and no boredom. Books read and more filled, good food and good times eating it, making it and sharing it, beers earned, long days but longer laughs, unpredictable things learned every single day, mistakes made but instincts still trusted, new old friends found, alone but less lonely, living over visiting, travelling over uh, trading over travelling, hard but somehow the easiest thing I've ever started. And just to finish, one of my friends that I've made along the way commented on this photograph saying, here's to new hats and even more cake. And I guess I couldn't have said it better myself. Here's the next six months. Mm -hmm. <laughs>